All right, so today's video, I wanna talk about battery certification. Now we're gonna be talking about this in a wide range of products, whether it's electric bikes, skateboards, scooters, uh, electric lawnmowers, cordless drills, wireless Bluetooth speakers, even electric cars. I wanna talk about everything because there's certifications that are different for every product, and we're gonna talk all about the chargers and how they are certified to work only with specific battery packs. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now I have a wide range of chargers that you see here, batteries, drone, camera batteries, cordless drill batteries, everything you see here is stuff that I use on a regular basis. And these are some of the most common electric bike batteries that are out there, as in voltage and amp hour size. So when we're talking about everything, we're gonna talk all about the chargers first. Actually, no, let's go into the most common household item that you see here in this pile, right? We're gonna talk about the cordless drill battery. All right, so when looking at this cordless drill battery, we're gonna talk about the things that it can be used for. You see right there, all the different things that this battery is used for, whether it be a drill, a saw, a light. These are the things that they specify that this can be used for. It is an 18 volt, four amp hour battery pack, and it lets you know how much juice is in it by pressing that button. Now, not every battery pack that you see out there that looks like this, you know, if you run on a budget and you're like, oh, I wanna save some money, I don't wanna get this specific battery, you're gonna pay the price because you're gonna get a fake. Let me show you what to look out for. So this battery is made for the USA. How can you tell? It's because it has the UL certification that you see down there at the bottom. Now the UL certification is USA based. Each country or I guess region area will have different certifications that we'll go over next. Not all batteries will have a UL certification, but it is a great way to help protect you, the user, and the brand, letting you know that this battery is protected against any fire damage, as well as the charger that comes with it. Now you'll see this on a lot of the products that this battery uses as well. The UL certification is right there, front and center, letting you know that this is the legit drill that this battery should work on. Now the chargers are a little covered up, but it has the same UL certification on the charger, letting me know that it is certified to be able to work with that battery. Now since we're over here, we're gonna talk about my setup. And the first thing your eyes were drawn towards is this strip and how many plugs are in that strip. Now, this strip is certified to be able to take this many plugs. Now, even when it comes down to what you're charging into, what you're plugging into, you wanna have some type of safety net with that. You would never wanna plug into a third party device that doesn't have any type of protection or certification to give you that peace of mind that your home won't be burned down. Now, this charger strip here is a smart charger strip, so it'll turn off once the batteries are at full charge. Now, this battery charger is also UL certified as well as the battery. Now, a lot of these newer batteries, whether it be cordless drills, or the charger systems will have a smart feature built into it to automatically turn off. So you don't necessarily need a strip like this to help protect you. Now the same thing goes with these electric skateboards. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the certification that I guess a Chinese manufacturer like these skateboards will come with versus a US made manufacturer, or even if it's not manufactured in the US, they will get different certifications depending on the area that they're selling to. Now these skateboards are made in China and they're all three from the same manufacturer, but they're gonna have different features about them, different battery and tech built in them. So each one has a different charger specifically for each board. Now this one right here is charging as we speak. It has a smart charging device built in. So once it's done, this will automatically turn off. We will look at the certifications on the back of this guy. You have the CE certification, which we'll talk about in a moment. You have the UL certification that we just went over for US base and the FCC logo, as well as other ones on there. But the FCC logo is definitely an important thing to remember. The other skateboard charging down here, exact same certifications. It tells you what the actual model number of this is, so I can marry this up to the model number of the board. It tells me the 51 volt and the 1.5 amp hour output that it has. So that's something that you really need to think about when you are charging devices. So we have a bunch of different chargers down there and we can talk about how to spot a fake charger. But first, I guess we'll talk about the battery that I use for this camera right here. This Lumix camera takes a specific battery and a charger and I, man, I got duped. Let me show you the one I bought. All right, so let's first start with the actual charger. This is the charger that came with my camera. And this is a nice little charger. I wanted to see if I can get multiples because I want to charge multiple batteries. And then I was cheap and I was like, ah, I don't want to spend the extra money for a Lumix one. 
you know, but then I'm looking at the Lumix and I see that UL certification now that I learned a bit more about this. The original Lumix batteries that came on my camera, they come with the same exact certification. The UL certification you see there on the back. These are things you really need to worry about. Why do you need to worry about it? It's because I got duped and I bought this guy on Amazon. I was like, oh yeah, I can get three of these for 15 bucks. Amazing. That'd be great. Yeah, they charged up, but they ran really, really hot in the charger and it got me worried, so I popped them out. Looking at the back, I was like, okay, it's got the CE certification, but what do you see missing there, guys? It's the FCC logo to make sure it is actually certified. This thing ran so hot and it does not even hold a charge. We're talking like I ran it like two or three times on my camera and it will not hold a charge anymore. I will not run this battery anymore. Now the same thing can be said about your phone chargers. A little charger block is really common. I'm sure every household has like 15 of these things by now. And uh, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, where's the certification to make sure that I'm not gonna die when this phone is charging at my house. And I flip it around and I look around to see where the certification would be to see if there's anything in there to make me feel a little bit better about it not burning down my house. And there's not one. So I got duped with this too on Amazon. Moral of the story is you could look at any one of these battery packs that I have here. I mean, even looking on the back of this Bluetooth speaker. I know a lot of people might not have this specific speaker, but a lot of people have a wireless Bluetooth speaker in their house. Now, when you flip this over, it has the certification there. You have the CE certification, you have the FCC logo, as well as other certifications for different areas, such as the BC certification. Now, this is something you really need to look out for. Like I said, there was a lot of fires started from other brands that have Bluetooth speakers. And not just Bluetooth speakers. Do you guys remember the hoverboard craze? And then there was like a huge amount of them that were just burning people's houses down. It's because that there were other Chinese manufacturers or even other brands somewhere else in the world that were getting away with stamping fake logos on there to make you feel like you have that certification, which that's definitely against the law. And if they're caught, which a lot of them have been caught, I'll try to attach some of the articles I found where companies have been caught falsifying the certification. I'll put those in the, in the description as well. But there's other things I wanna show you. So a lot of the bike companies that I've done reviews on, I won't do a review for somebody that doesn't have some type of safety or certification to be able to back up the product because I feel like I would be giving you guys false information. So let's look at a couple of the bike batteries I have here. Now, a couple of these will have logos like this one, Hey Bike. You have the, uh, you have the FCC logo there, the little CE logo there, letting you know you have a certification there. We have, what is this from? This is from uh, Ride One Up. This is from Ride One Up. You have the CE logo there. Now, it has a Tion Fu, which is a Fuji. This is a Fuji battery, which they have a certification themselves. I did look up this battery manufacturer to make sure it had a certification before I brought it out and showcased it, because I did do a review on this bike recently, which this is actually a really nice battery. And it's a pretty commonly used battery when it comes to the voltage and the amp hour. Now, not a lot of these batteries will marry in the same bike. I know like this battery and this one look very much similar, and I've tried to put them in other bikes to do little tests to see if it would change the range, but there are certifications that mean that you, you really shouldn't put maybe like a Hemiway battery with an aerial rider bike because the voltage isn't made to match their motor configuration. Now I did make sure, like I said, that this battery had the certification before doing this video because I really don't even have any batteries. Like this one has the ROHS logo as well, it's upside down, but this is on the aerial rider Grizzly. Same thing with the CE logo there and uh, it's a 52 volt, 18 amp hour battery. This is a pretty big battery pack. Now moving from battery packs, let's talk about chargers. How can you spot a fake charger? Well, it's pretty easy. This charger here, I'm not too sure which bike, skateboard, or scooter this came from, but it's fake. You guys can already spot it by now. It has a CE logo there, but no FCC logo to give you that stamp of approval or any other partnership when it comes to certification. Now the certifications, like I said, are right here. The UL, the FCC, and the CE certification, as well as a BC certification. This is a Velotric charger. This thing is pretty dialed. This one is an aftermarket charger I have for my electric DIY BMX bike. The FCC with the CE logo, added protection. Pretty much all of these chargers are gonna have that CE FCC logo. You're gonna have the CE, we have the UL certification. This one also has one, it is a BFP certification. FCC UL certification. This one has the FCC BFP certification. Now I feel like we tackled a lot of the topics when it comes to lithium batteries, except for one thing, cars. Now this isn't a car channel, but I do own a Tesla and I have another one on the way and I get a lot of flack from people telling me not only is it bad for the environment, but it's gonna burn down the house. And 
A lot of people just don't know what they're talking about. They try to share images like this with the lithium mining, and they don't understand that your phone that you're probably watching this on right now is the majority of this mining. When it comes to electrification for bikes or cars, it is less than a fraction of a percentage of the lithium mining that you see on any of that stuff. So when it comes down to electric cars, it is just too politicized. Same thing with electric bikes. People are politicizing the electrification of just transportation. It's ridiculous. This is just my little rant. I mean, I'm I'm kind of frustrated that people were just so misled with articles after articles of e-bike burns down house, e-bike burns down bike shop, and they're not understanding that maybe it was just the DIY setup that that person had. Maybe they didn't know what they were doing with the configuration, with the voltage and amp hours, and maybe even the charging. The charging pack couldn't have been right for it. Every one of those chargers is specific to a bike, specific to a skateboard, specific to a drill. Even this car, you can't charge like a Prius on this, you have to charge a Tesla. This has the same exact UL certification. I mean, these are things that a lot of people don't know. Now I'm showing you that is because people were under the impression that a charger like that, or the bike chargers, or even like the lawnmower charger I have over there, or the drill charger, all these chargers are what causes fires. And I think that that is wrong. I had a friend that burned a good portion of their house down because they plugged their Amazon product into a third party accessory that wasn't compatible with the output from that. So you really got to look at these things. And that's the reason why sometimes you'll feel some of these chargers for your phones or your phone's running really hot. It's because it's not compatible with the cable and the charger block provided. So that right there will not burn the house down. Now, could it possibly, but that's because the user error when the installation process is happening. Now I've seen photos like this you'll see on the screen. And in this photo, the average person is misled to think that the car is what burned down the house. But as you can tell, the majority of the fires within the home. And the first thing I can think of was either as an oven fire or a terrible use of installation skills. And maybe somebody called their cousin that maybe took like one course and in installing a couple electrical socket boxes. And they're like, oh yeah, I got it, man. Give me a couple beers, I got it. I would never trust anybody other than an electrical engineer to wire this into my box down in the basement. If you guys have any other questions or suggestions about different bikes, skateboards, scooters, cars, you name it, just chat with me in the comments below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna catch you in the next one.